the question I want to ask now is whether the security agencies are actually counting the cost of the insurgency. And Dr. Izeguizla, I want to bring you in again. When you look at the cost of what is going on in the Northeast, we're looking at the World Bank reports and et cetera, they've talked, said about approximately 2.1 million people have been displaced by conflict. The database of orphans and widows is growing rapidly. Over 7 million Nigerians are in need of assistance. So when we talk about, oh, there's no intelligence, and oh, what can we do? The humanitarian fallout of this insurgency is something that even the world is looking at and they are alarmed. How do you think we can, we can you know, prosecute this war in such a way that the victims of it are looked after, t taken care of? By making the matter of the um, importance of the life of every Nigerian to be at the center of our economic development strategy, of every conversation that we're having, it just has to be that we have a consensus that the life of one person that is endangered amongst us is the life, or the, rather the lives of all of us. We haven't gotten to that point. It's almost like it's okay when it affects other people. We can keep moving on because after all, most of what our country depends on for its revenue is coming from extraction. It is called lottery ticket of being a, an oil endowed country. If we changed our mindset to the fact that it is your individuals, your people, taking through education, skills development to becoming human capital that then determine your productivity and your competitiveness. You see, you're no longer thinking that they are just easily dispensable. If they are killed, it doesn't matter. Your mindset shifts entirely so that your policy dimension for looking at issues of security completely changes. A key matter for me is the point you raised. The humanitarian disaster in the Northeast, nobody talks about it. People that live even as close as Abuja are far removed from the scenes of places where we have so many women, many children, that are completely disconnected from the semblance of being a normal country. But the truth is, we are growing a huge population of people who are disaffected, mm -hmm. disconnected, <laughs> and who are so totally going to take on this society if we don't get a handle on the situation. My final point is that, you see, there's a maxim that's normally used in the military circle and they say that we don't have bad officers. We don't have bad soldiers. We only have bad officers. We need to look at the issue of the leadership of our security institution. In fact, we should look at the issue of the leadership of the office of the commander in chief of the armed forces. Is that office operating optimally to preserve the sanctity, the integrity, the dignity of the human life? Is that what's going on in this country right now? Or have we reduced the value of the human person that is a Nigerian to something that is not comparable to human life in That's other right. societies? We need to have this candid conversation. I am not for a conversation that pretends mm. and wants to sort of say, let's not be as candid as possible. I totally believe that as far as security is concerned, that's the number one priority on the agenda of a new government that comes into this country. Because the Nigerian life must matter. These children in the, in the IDP camps, who remembers them every day? As in every day. You know what's, what worries me? We're losing the toddlers in that camp because their generation they're going to be angry generation. The young ones, that is the youths in that camp, are already angry. What are we building? The social fabric of our society is threatened. And we don't have the luxury of pretending that there are priorities so great. Think of it. If we don't get security right, who are you going to be doing the budget for? 
if yeah. we don't get security right. Guess, I'm going to have to put to <laughs> You know, I mean, you. you got me yeah. talking about something yeah, I, that... I, I have, I'm going to have to stop. Can I, can I'm going to have to stop you because point. now we're completely out of time. Oh, wow. And um, we've got to start saying thank you to you all, uh, Dr. Ezekwezini, Mr. Uh, uh, Colonel uh, Hassan Stanlabo, uh, Mr. Adetaya, thank you so much for being here. The time is never going to be enough. In fact, if we mm. devoted the entire two and a half hours to just this security, security discussion, we would still not have tackled it adequately. But I want to thank you for highlighting the key points. Mr. Lawrence Alobi in Abuja, thank you so much uh, for your perspective, especially of the police, because mm. the police primarily is responsible for internal security and the state of the police now. We hear from you, who was a policeman, that isn't very good. And I'm sure those who keep criticizing the police have heard you and maybe they'll do something. Uh, about that. Uh, we hope, we hope, the key word was hope, uh, that they would. But let us also thank our studio audience who have been wonderful uh, guests. I think uh, they keep giving applauses on cue, so maybe this time this one should be spontaneous. Uh, please give yourselves an applause. Thank you uh, so much for being here. Um, all our guests from the first segment to the last. Uh, I know it's not easy for anyone to get up leave your house, come out, go through all the protocol of being in the studio, and then just as you are getting wound up with the yeah, discussion, we are saying that thank you so much for coming. But that is, uh, that is television so broadcasting for That is of us. Of, 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 of us. Well, we hope our country has more time, mm. uh, because we are 58 now. And anybody who is 58 uh, is already... On the other side. Like, on the I, other side. like I was saying to Ladi in the green room before, before we came out here, we hope that at 59, we're not sitting down to and talk having about the same conversation about the same yeah. issues. We hope that at least we would have moved Get good a step ahead. Get good governance. By that, by that time, we Get hope we would have. Get good governance. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, we want to say thank you, of course, to all those who have been with us uh, online and all those who have been watching uh, across all our platforms, across the globe we want to thank you so much please keep the conversation going yeah. let's have your views uh on the various issues and on the various points that have been made by everyone uh this kind of production of course is put together with the help of a lot of people a lot who of you people don't behind see, the scenes but we keep okay. hearing through our <laughs> various wires wi various wires <laughs> and sometimes they are yelling now you can hear me <laughs> wince occasionally uh when when it gets a bit too loud we want to say thank you to them uh for this yeah. and to hope that uh we have tried to bring some, some, just some yeah. kind of enlightenment to some of the critical issues uh, at Nigeria at 58. My name is Ladi Akere Dulale IJ. I'm Joma Onyato, and have a good celebration wherever you are in the world. And we do this again at 59, but in a happier mood, mood with that's less it. issues. <laughs> good night. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Yeah.